on the chat mode somebody asked about some issues by nuclear power and of course they are disappearing <laughs> so very good news and the good thing uh, we have is strong growing the bad thing we have less than three percent so we have to grow much more that's true and i think this is also the key message why we showed them um, um, the graphs in that order that um, we saw basically or we're seeing now this almost 50 percent share that we're having for new power capacities but um, in total power generation output um, solar is very very small uh, so um, let's um, hope that uh, the coronavirus is uh, is not only a threat but uh, much more than even turns it it turns into a, a chance uh, we're seeing that um, and I think this is, um, we've also put that um, um, or mentioned that in the report, actually, that several countries already have started um, active um, measures to support solar. Um, I think a very nice example is Japan, which is in general um, struggling in the energy transition. But they, for example, recently passed um, $1 billion um, as part of their eco um, economic stimulus fund to support um, um, PPA-based um, system for um, renewable um, um, corporate power sourcing. Yeah. So also surprising was uh, Vietnam. We make around a gigawatt with the Siemens inverters. And it's very good rising. And I see in your numbers, we have a good market share. <laughs> yes, that's true. Okay, thanks. Um, are there any other questions, participants? Actually, we have a question that came up in the in the Q and A in the in the other in the other session, uh, and it was about, if I recall, the uh, what happens to PV system. I assume rooftop PV system at the end of uh, feeding tariffs after 15, 20 years, uh, which we did not really address in the conversation. So maybe we can have a few words about it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you want to address it. No, please go ahead. Oh, so. um, yeah, from my side, I think I think this is a very interesting question indeed. Uh, and uh, in my view, the uh, the guinea pig in this context would be Germany because it's been the first country implementing feed in tariffs since the since the two thousands. And so this is the year in which the first PV system installed will phase out their their feed in tariffs. Um, and so it's uh, on the one end. Yes, the feed-in tariff will be will be over, so there will be fewer remuneration uh, for for the system owners. But on the other hand, by now the uh, the system totally paid back, uh, and you can also consider that the uh, the system will continue its lifetime. So we expect a lifetime of twenty, thirty, perhaps more. <laughs> difficult to tell right now. Uh, years of operation, and so right now anything that is produced is is in practice free electricity but an interesting dynamic is that running out of feed-in tariff incentives probably will spur the market for a residential storage system which is something that we are we're already seeing and we expect to kick in strongly after 2020 2020 2021 so in the moment in which the first feed-in tariffs expire then there will be probably a stronger uh, economic reason to to install a storage system together with a residential or rooftop system, which is something that is already taking place quite a stronger pace in Germany, at least, and, and popping up in uh, very, various countries, at least in the, in the EU. Okay, there's also um, a question um, regarding um, the size and spread of installation um, sizes. Um, I, I can take that. So, so what we're seeing is obviously that um, the, that there's um, that that the do dominating um, um, segment is still utility scale solar systems. Um, all the the large market are dominated by um, that segment. So that's China, that's India, that's the U.S. Um, and that's um, many many other markets. Um, what's interesting is that. Um, even in um, in countries um, that in, in new markets we're seeing that so that Spain the comeback is based on utility scale solar Vietnam is um, absolutely dominated by um, by utility scale solar um, Ukraine which was also new on the list um, 
is also dominated by utility scale solar, even though both Spain and uh, Ukraine also have um, have um, some some rooftop parts. Um, but but even in, in Germany, I think, and that's that's interesting, is um, which has been traditionally more a rooftop market um, where commercial systems have been big and we're also seeing um, a trend as much as it is possible towards bigger systems um, which is um, supported um, by um, by PPA based systems um, so the first um, um, systems outside the, the feed-in tariff scheme were installed last year. This year, um, the 175 megawatt system from uh, ENBW is um, expected to come online, which is uh, one of the biggest in Germany. And we're having several more under development. So there is for sure um, a big trend towards um, utility scale. Um, on the other hand, um, um, we're also seeing um, Grows um, um, in the um, in the residential field, um, driven by this whole prosumer idea, um, which is also being supported in particular by the European Commission, um, but also by several governments, and obviously is also in the interest of people, simply because um, producing solar often is um, so much cheaper. So we're well, for quite a while at socket parity, so the returns are there, um, that um, this um, will continue. And I think also we have to take a look at that field. Um, it's obviously also more lucrative for businesses um, to be in that field. The margins are higher. Um, and, um, and it will be driven also by new schemes, um, not um, that that complement basically the, um, the, 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 the liberal approach and that's, um, that's a different one um, and which is probably spearheaded by California which as of this year has made it obligatory to put um, solar systems on, um, on rooftops. Um, we will see um, um, more of that. There's also the, the renovation package um, in Europe, um, which will address um, the rooftop segment. But we're also seeing somewhat um, already followers in California. What I found interesting, um, Germany's smallest um, state, um, the city state of Bremen, has um, last um, week also um, passed um, that, um, that on all um, newly built homes, um, Solar has to be um, included, and that's not only for private, but that's um, also for um, for public homes. So um, while the focus for the for for sure um, is um, and the, is, is, is util, utility score, scale solar to dominate, but um, um, we're also seeing a lot of interest and push in the rooftops, also uh, with batteries, obviously. Mm. Rafael, we want to talk on policy a bit um, so that there are no questions. Maybe you want to say something on, 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 on what we see in Europe actually also, um, what, what's the hot topics there? Yeah, um, oh, we have a question actually. <laughs> So it's a question about the NECPs. Uh, yeah, maybe explain also what NECPs are. Because, uh, yeah, so uh, it's referring to the National Energy and Climate Plans, which are uh, EU well, member states' plans to, in terms of climate and energy policies that have to be redacted by each member state, uh, making a trajectory and a plan towards 2030. Um, and now we are in the stage of uh, gathering all these uh, all these climate plans, I think only one is missing right now, uh, and they will be reviewed uh, jointly by the Commission uh, in order to assess whether the individual member states' contribution is enough to uh, is in line with the 2030 objectives, and in case they need to be revised. 
so the question here specifically is about Italy uh, and a growth for the rooftop market versus utility scale after, well, in light of COVID. Um, so from, from we, what we are doing at Solar Power Europe is to make a, a, an assessment of all NECPs from member states um, with regard to, to solar and the features that are, that are within, this, uh, within these plans. So not only about solar targets, but as well, for instance, the framework when it comes to tenders, uh, uh, the, the administ administrative procedures, the flexibility, how it is addressed, because it's... Uh, it's, uh, it's um, provisions that are quite important even if indirectly for solar uh, so for and and this uh, this assessment will be published shortly on uh, on our platform um, what we can say is that in, from the preliminary assessment from the italian necp we can say that is a, a pretty good one it has uh, it ticks quite many boxes um, and it's uh, it's quite ambitious as well when it comes to, to solar target so it contains a lot of information and it has uh, it has quite good provisions when it comes to the development of flexibilities and and new balancing markets, for instance, for for the setting of options, for administrative procedures. For I think there's even uh, one of the few markets that has the, uh, the few NECPs that have provision when it comes to to BPAs. Um, now it's difficult what to to, to to anticipate what the Commission will do once this. Uh, uh, this assessment is, is carried out, but we are monitoring the developments uh, on this regard, and we will we will certainly exchange with the Commission to to understand what uh, what the joint efforts from individual member states mean at uh, at the block level. Other questions. What we've actually done, um, so I, I didn't mention it in the presentation, but um, when you when you download um, the report, you you might want to look into that. Is um, the the technology trends part? Um, so it's a little bit different from um, from the rest of, um, um, of 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 the whole report. Um, um, and here we list um, um, what's going on. Um, in, in terms of um, technology developments that we're seeing. And, um, um, and these are all um, developments that are um, close already um, in the market um, or have just entered the market. And um, it's, um, it's, it's pretty impressive to look at that um, because um, many people might think um, solar module still looks like um, it looked uh, many, many years ago. But in fact, um, a lot has been happening and there are several trends that we are at the moment seeing there, especially on the module level. Um, so we're seeing a trend to bigger wafers and it's really not clear what the format will look like. We're seeing a trend to much bigger modules. There's a new class of for the utility scale market, 500 watt plus market that were recently introduced by by the by the leading um, solar module manufacturers, um, there are um, really um, um, also new tech, new cells um, um, being increasingly used. While in the past we, um, in the last few years, um, it was um, sort of the the the, the perk years where perk um, solar cells became a new standard. Now that that has happened, many. Um, companies are looking um, into, into the next technology. Will it be Topcon? Will it be heterojunction? Um, the, 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 there's a lot of things going on and it's um, interesting to, to, to look at that field because um, the, there, there's obviously one reason the, the, the prices in these, um, in these bids are, are going on, uh, going down. The, the companies in the end have to um, to be profitable and and um, so um, that means if prices go down um, they they have to improve on cost and um, that is happening and um, it's happening on, on on various fronts 
Uh, so um, that's uh, um, pretty interesting times, I think. And it's um, interesting also to look at, uh, at system applications, so not just at module or, or individual components, but also the applications such as uh, AgriPV or, or floating solar, right? True, no, yeah, true, that's right. It's not only, um, only at the panel level or the individual um, components, um, wh whatever you look at, um, if you look at inverters, if you look at mounting systems, but it's, um, it's really the, the, the entire system. And um, um, the, the, the question from, from Gada here also um, is on, um, on, on technology forecast for solar panels. Um, Honestly, it is really, really difficult to say at the moment um, because um, if you, um, and I think the, the, the biggest um, topic at the moment are, are wafer sizes. So um, uh, it was not long ago that we were at, uh, at an M, M, M0 format. Um, and so that means it was uh, 156 by 156 millimeters. And in, in really, uh, uh, just very very short um, time and um, that has changed and, um, and wafer manufacturers have come out with so many different sizes um, that it remains to be seen what will um, what will dominate um, um, there and um, we're seeing now even so-called m12 so that means 210 millimeter um, wafers um, um, as the base for for cells and modules, um, here really the the question is also um, um, if how many how many companies will embrace that. Um, um, time time can only tell, and, and and the same thing is true if you look at cell technologies. Um, um, most of the bigger companies are looking um, into into all the high efficiency cell technologies. Some have these preferences, others have these preferences. And um, also here, time will only tell. Um, the good thing is actually, and that's what, um, um, what uh, developers um, and, and in the end also um, end users will profit from. We see um, lower costs for the products. We see lower prices um, for the products and we get um, higher efficiencies um, to, yeah, which in the end actually also results in, in, in over lower solar power um, costs. Um, so still a dynamic field. <laughs> So as said, if, if uh, someone wants to pose a question, you also feel free to um, put on your, your mic and, and camera and we can address the question together. So if there are no, no upcoming questions, then we can discuss a little bit uh, for the last issue. As you mentioned, when the feed-in tariff after 20 years is gone and my private modules are working, I expect they can run long, much longer time. And it depends on the local situation, what happens next. If they can feed in or if you have to use the current new house, what's it, depending on the situation. And today we are looking for leaving the border of 52 gigawatts in Germany. We hope they will skip this week. And it depends on the situation, what happens in the next half year. What's about storage systems? You see my private inverter. It's also the system on the rooftop is 20 years old and will run out of the feed-in tariff. And the question is, should I add a battery storage system? Should I have a cut of feed in? So everything is possible. Yeah. 
I think it's a good point. Um, so um, when I was doing the research for the report um, and I was reading about Japan, um, I was quite impressed that um, how many systems in Japan actually already have gotten out of their feed-in scheme. So um, Japan started a bit earlier than we, um, or um, well, um, of course with their rooftop program, but um, with feed-in tariffs later, but they only have 10-year feed-in tariffs. And so um, um, a considerable amount is out. And the interesting thing is what I just read is that a lot of companies are actually at the moment also getting into that um, field. We need obviously to have the policy framework to enable new business models that we can get aggregators to help um, selling maybe electricity on the wholesale markets. Um, what I think almost anything is possible. The question is um, um, how the, the regulatory framework will look like. Um, and um, if it goes the way um, the um, red two, um, the, the last clean energy package has shown, a lot should be possible, but mm -hmm. um, we still have to wait for in Europe for at least for the national member states to put things um, into practice. So that means why that's, for example, why one of our policy asks is um, in Europe and, or in, in Brussels, that we really want to have a coordination um, point, which really checks um, how the clean energy package um, provisions are being implemented so that in such occasions, um, investors uh, are not having to um, deal with um, yeah, with obstacles they uh, they individually cannot handle, and others maybe uh, have an interest not to solve because they profit from that. Yeah, as I know, we have two hundred thousand uh, storage system in Germany. I have also one, and the second is waiting for the new regulatories. What's happened? If I can use this, uh, or if I have to skip my produced energy. Everything is handing on the feed-in tariff. What happened next? Sure. And, and you're right. Um, actually, as you see, um, so I think a solar system's lifetime is not over after 20 years. Um, uh, and um, I believe that these 40-year um, warranty, uh, this 30-year um, warranties that were the production warranties that we're seeing um, is um, uh, has some fundamental backing, backing um, um, and scientific backing. Otherwise, um, um, otherwise, uh, module manufacturers would not do that. And we're seeing that now, not only for glass glass modules, but also for glass backsheet modules. So um, uh, I think there's. I, I also did recently some research, and that at, a, at an NREL website, I saw that they were saying actually 40 years are possible. Um, and um, yeah, so if you only get a feed in tariff for 20 years, um, then um, there it would be a shame actually if uh, if the other 20 years uh, would go to waste. Um, so um, let's uh, yeah, I think that's uh, really something we also have to work um, as associations around the world. Uh, Hi. Some of my old systems oh, are 20 seven years in operation and the last years with higher irradiation, they have the same output as 20 years before. So I expect, as you saw, more than 30 years, of course. And uh, some of them have some uh, test internal, which shows 25 years warranty when we start in 20, 1979. And these modules have in real lifetime now more than 40 years because 20 years outside and the test was more for, done for more than 40 years. And of course, around about 90% of efficiency at their modules. So with new models, of course, it should be also in this range in 30 years plus. Yeah. I'm just interrupting you shortly. Sorry. Um, the uh, next session is on. I put the link in the chat and uh, your colleagues are kindly letting you know that okay. you could switch now. So you can you can finish your question, but uh, then you can follow my link and um, I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, see you thank later. you. Okay, thanks. thank you. Bye. Okay, thanks, Bodo. I think we are just finished.
<laughs> okay, yeah. So shall See we get the one from Zolt still or um, Rafaela or? Sure, we can we can we can discuss quickly the the top three European okay. solar markets. So as said, uh, while well, we're we're looking at EU is different from the European as a whole picture, because then importantly there is the case of Ukraine. Um, but then if you look at EU, we have indeed uh, we have Spain, which has been a surprisingly large market in in uh, in 2019. Well, not so surprisingly, in fact, since uh, most of the capacity has been the result of of the auction back in, in 2017, uh, which mandated a uh, system to be completed or grid connected by the end of, of 2019 in order to be eligible for, 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 for the feed-in tariff. Um, and as such, it's, uh, it's been very positive to see that most of the capacity that had been auctioned, so actually more than 95%, has been, uh, has been actually grid connected despite some delays that, uh, that created some concerns between uh, at, uh, at, uh, at national level in Spain. Uh, but yes, fortunately, most of the capacity has been installed. Um, so indeed, the utility scale has, has taken the lion's share of, of the uh, Spanish market. Uh, however, since the removal of the uh, sun, sun tax, the so-called sun tax in, in 2018, there's been also quite a strong development of the, of the rooftop segment. Uh, which had about uh, 400, 500 uh, megawatts installed uh, in 2019 and, and seems to be constantly growing now. Of course, in, in light of, of COVID-19, there has been a, a, a drop in, uh, in the rooftop segment, especially in Spain, which has been one of the, the, the countries that has been uh, hit the hardest by the crisis. Uh, and problems related to, to things such as conducting business, but especially for the rooftop segment. Uh, so on the one hand, uh, the salesmen had issues in, in conducting their own business, but from, this, from the demand side, there's been a slump in, in, in requests because people clearly had their priorities at the uh, household level, but also at the CNI level, businesses were struggling financially. And so that, that created some problems. Um, however, uh, what UNEF, the um, Spanish uh, PV Association, expects is a, is a rather stable uh, utility scale segment that, that stands at two and a half to three uh, gigawatt installed per year, provided that some, some issues when it comes to, to land access and permitting and are, are, are addressed. But the pipeline in Spain is huge. so. There is a lot of interest to develop new plants, even subsidies free plants. And there's been some examples already of, of fairly, fairly large plants for, for the European context. So our, our overall uh, outlook for, for Spain is a, is a rather stable and fairly large market that, uh, that continues consistently to, to, to install new PV capacity. And this is in line with the Spanish NECP, which has a pretty, pretty strong car targets for development of for 2030 and uh, the target for 100% renewables that uh, the Spanish government set out in, in 2018. And then maybe a few words about Germany as well. Um, and then Michael, I don't know if you want to take Ukraine and say a few words later. Uh, so yeah, from my maybe, side, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think let's, from, let's from, do Germany and then take the rest of the record because I think we should. Yes, indeed. So about Germany, uh, it's, it's been a quite, quite strong market growth. So we had 2.9 gigas last year, uh, sorry, in 2018, and compared to, to 3.9 uh, in 2019. So absolute one gigawatt more than, than the year before. Uh, there's been a lot of uncertainties when it comes to this uh, solar cap of 52 gigas, whether it will be removed or not. So that creates quite some uncertainty, especially at the CNI segment. Um, and so that definitely had an impact in the first three months of the year, and then Corona kicked in. Uh, now uh, it's it's important also to notice that Germany has been one of the least impacted countries in Europe when it comes to to lockdown, because there were fewer limitations that in other countries such as Italy and and, and Spain or France. Um, However, the CNI segment has been impacted by, by the two of them. So a combination of the two. Now the solar cap seems to be uh, removed because there's been an announcement by, by the, um, by the uh, German administration. However, this has not been carried out quite yet. So their announcement is there, but we're re really running out of time because the, the 52 
gigawatt cap is set to be reached within weeks. So uh, the, the government should really speed up this, this uh, legislative process and, and remove the cap uh, in order to allow the feed-in tariffs to, to continue afterwards. But overall, our, our outlook for Germany is quite positive. We expect uh, six to seven gigawatts uh, in, in the coming years annually. Uh, so overall, uh, a quite strong, strong increase in, and, and contribution to, to the overall EU uh, gigawatt uh, deployment. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you to everyone for staying with us. Thanks, Walt. And uh, so let's go back into the conference room. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.